Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ashley and today we're gonna to be checking in on my Makeup Rehab series. This is a series that I started at the beginning of the year to help try to rein in a little bit of my makeup purchasing. When I sat down and looked at all of my makeup purchases from 2021, I realized that I was bringing in makeup more quickly than I was using it. And I don't even mean using it up. I mean using it, period. You guys know that I am such a makeup lover. I love everything about it. I love buying it. I love wearing it. I love playing with it. I love watching other people talk about it. Like, I am clearly a little bit of a fanatic. But what I was finding is that I was much more focused on the satisfaction of the purchasing side of things finding a product that you really like, going out, ordering it, waiting with anticipation until it arrives, and then using it once or twice, or sadly in some cases, not even at all, and then moving on to the next high of the purchasing side of things. And that's why I really want to kind of rein it in because that isn't what I want. I don't wanna be more excited about the act of buying something than about having it and using it. I want to just get more out of it. And you guys know I'm a project planner, so I work very hard at trying to use my makeup anyway, but I just need to find myself in a little bit more balance and a little bit more alignment and just be much more aware of what I'm bringing in. So I was very much inspired by two of my favorite channels here on YouTube. The first one you've heard me talk about at nauseum. I feel like I talk about her once a month, but that's Paula. Her channel is a beauty guru made me do it as well as It's Just Steph. Both of them have a makeup rehab series that has a beauty bank in it. And you have a starting number of credits, then your purchases take away from your bank, your empties add to it. And I thought that would be um, a little bit more of a fun way of approaching a low buy. I've done low buys in the past that have not worked well for me, whether it be a restriction on the amount of money I can spend or a restriction on the number of items I can purchase. None of it really worked for me and I'm hoping that this might be that kind of secret sauce formula. So we'll find out. So let's talk about how I have structured my makeup rehab series. So I'm gonna scooch over because I'm gonna add in a little bit of information here because it might be slightly convoluted. <laughs> so I have a starting bank of 25 credits. So anything that I purchase will work against that bank with one sort of caveat there. Eyeshadow, eyeshadow palettes are my passion. I love them, I love them so much. So I have given myself a free pass of 12 eyeshadow palettes before they start hitting my bank. In addition to that, I have a couple of things that I have a no buy or low buy restriction on. So I put myself on a no buy when it comes to mascaras, although I'm positive I'm going to be breaking that. Um, and when it comes to lip products, I would like to purchase no more than five lip products. I have an abundance. Now, when I use something up, I can get some of those credits back. So the way that I have structured mine is that I get a half a credit for any full size empty makeup product that I have, and then I get a quarter of a credit for any sort of deluxe sample size or mini product. Foil samples and stuff like that don't count. And I just, I really feel like that will help me use through some things and pull back my purchases a little bit. Now there are, there is one other um, sort of exception when it comes to what counts against my bank. I slipped it into my description bar on my intro video because I forgot to mention it in the video itself. But things like PR and gifts, I'm not counting towards my beauty bank. And let's be honest, I don't get PR. However, I am um, a participant in Influencer, and sometimes they do send me makeup products for review, so I don't want that to count towards my bank. And then also, I'm not gonna lie, my four-year-old likes to buy me stuff when he and his dad go to the store. He likes to pick stuff out for me and bring it home, and I cherish everything that he brings home, whether it's something that flatters me or not. And I just have no desire to have things like gifts carry the weight of going against my, my beauty bank. So let's go ahead, I'll scoot back over, and let's talk about 
what I brought in to my collection in the month of January. So January is usually an easier month for me. That's something that I have noticed whether I'm on any sort of low buy or not. I just don't tend to purchase a ton in January and I think it's because December is such a big month for bringing things in, whether they're things that I've purchased for myself or they're gifts or whatever the case may be. And so I'm usually a little bit better about purchases. However, there are a couple of things that I did buy. The first of which you guys have seen a couple of dedicated videos on, and that is my Blend Bunny Cosmetics, the Dollhouse palette. Love this palette so much it is an absolute stunner if you have not seen those videos i will link them down in the description box below this is what the palette looks like and i'm obsessed obsessed i absolutely love it adore it so happy with that purchase so happy with that purchase i did also recently uh pick up another palette and i'm kind of laughing at myself because it's it's ColourPop. So I spoke about being interested in the Smoke and Roses palette a few months ago when it was released. I think I talked about it in one of my Temptation Station videos. I was like, well, I don't need it, but I want it. And if it comes to Ulta, I'll probably, at that point, probably pick it up because I can get points and stuff. But... They had a sale on ColourPop's website, which they've been having a lot of recently, but they had the bundle again with the eyeshadow palette and the brush roll, and it was 30% off, so I bought it because I am a sucker, I suppose. So this is what the palette looks like. I have one other of the mega palettes. I have the It's a Mood palette, which I absolutely love. It ranked, I think, number two last year as far as my top palettes of the year went. So I was really excited about getting this one. It's just a pink and purple and kind of beigey palette. I've used it once. It just actually came in the mail a couple of days ago. So I've only used it once. I don't have any sort of opinion on it. I'm intending to film a three looks one palette with it. So let me know down in the comments if you are excited for that because I'm, I'm happy to film it. But I've been really curious about the ColourPop brushes because I have not tried any of them and they've been releasing brushes for a few years now. So I did pick up the brush roll that came with this. As you can see, I have not yet used them because they are still so pristine and pretty. Tell me, are you the same way when it comes to your brushes? I personally, I hate using light colored brushes because the moment you use them, they just, they're dirty. <laughs> they don't look as pretty anymore. So I, I usually sort of gravitate towards darker bristled brushes because you know, they hide it a little bit better. It doesn't visually look like it needs to be washed the moment that you use it, even though technically, yes, it probably should. But I am excited to give those a try. I have very high hopes for them. I've seen a lot of people talk about them and really enjoy them. So very hopeful there. And uh, I do have a gift. So this lipstick was one of the things that my son purchased for me. Um, he also picked out some nail polishes, but I, I don't have that as part of this. And I'll be honest, I don't recommend the nail polishes anyway. But so this is from Revlon. And this, I'm not gonna lie, took me 100% by surprise. So just based on the sticker, this is not something that I would have picked up for myself. Is that coming in focus? There we go. Based on that sticker, I would not have purchased this at all. However, this is gorgeous. So this is what the shade actually looks like. Nothing at all like the sticker. This is um, a really glossy sort of finish. Look at that. It is absolutely beautiful. I have worn this so many times since he purchased it. Uh, well, he didn't purchase it. He's four. Since he picked it out, my husband purchased it. Um, but this is from the Revlon Super Lustrous Shine line. And the shade is Toasting Glasses. I am completely obsessed with this. It 100% took me by surprise. I did not expect to love this. When he brought it home and I saw that sticker, I was like, that's going to be interesting. <laughs> but I'm telling you, it's Stunning. I almost wish that I was wearing it today. I'm wearing Mac O. But this is amazing. 
and I really, really like this formula and I definitely recommend it. It's beautiful. So there we have it. So technically nothing hits my bank since I have the two free eyeshadow palette or I've got the 12 free eyeshadow palettes that knocks down to 10 and I do have some empties. So let me go ahead and grab them because they fell on the floor. Okay, so I have already posted my January empties. If you have not seen it, I'll link that down in the description and in the cards. But I have finished two makeup empties and they are right here. So let's talk about the one full size and that is a lip balm. So this is from Nivea. This is their Moisture Lip Care. This is probably my favorite drugstore type of lip balm. I absolutely love it. I have gone through a few of these over the years. I have a few more left. Totally used up. Really love it, really like it. Not everybody counts lip balm as makeup. Some people count it as skincare. I've always counted it as makeup. It's always in my makeup empties, in my makeup inventory, things like that. So this is totally counting. So this is going to give me a half a credit back into my bank. And then I also finished up a deluxe sample size of the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Mascara. I sadly did not like this. I think the brush itself, the wand, I think is quite nice. It is a interesting shape. So it's got bristles on kind of the flared side and then the rest of it is a flat paddle. And I feel like it distributed and applied mascara to my lashes very nicely. Um, I don't think it did a ton as far as like volumizing or lengthening goes. It just really sort of darkened my lashes, which you know, there's a time and place for that. The biggest drawback though, and the reason that this is not something that I would repurchase is because it transferred on me. I struggle with mascara transferring a ton. So mascara is a very personal choice, but for me, it just, it got all over <laughs> the bottom part of my eyes and gave me the whole raccoon look, which is not what I'm personally going for. So this is not something that I would purchase but it is an empty so it does get me a quarter of a credit so here we have what my month is ending out with and i feel like i'm off to a very good start we'll see what february brings but so far i feel like i'm doing pretty good how do you feel about your purchases so far are you like me is january kind of a, a gimme sort of month or have you found yourself picking up a few things to kind of chase away those gloomy winter days. I would love to know. As always, everything that I'm wearing will be linked in the description box below. And if you have not yet subscribed, I hope that you'll consider doing so. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I hope that you're having an amazing day and I will see you next time. Bye.